Hello YouTubers, Andy back again. Uh, thanks for joining me and um, thank you for all the new subscribers. Um, it is satisfying when you log on and you see an email that you've got a new subscriber or subscribers. Um, right, so a bit of a different uh, uh, video this time. This is all just going to be done on a, uh, a web camera because I'm working right in front of me and I've recently started looking at what they call the HA switch plate or the HASP for um, Home Assistant and the problem is, well I made my own problem as I normally do, is they use Nexion the screens but they use a 2.4 inch screen and I have in stock some 3.5 inch screens. Now it's not as simple as just loading on the, their software onto the new screen because the software and the buttons are all mapped to work on a small screen. Now this is a 3.5 inch and really when you've got the smaller one it's literally like here, it stops here and it goes up there and it's really tiny but it's a fantastic project, it's all open source um, and it was, it was made to put these tiny or the, the tiny screens in the 2.4 inch screens into a switch plate of an American house and that's why it's so small. So I'm now working with my big one. I've got a smaller one on order because I'm struggling to remap the buttons and understand how these next gen screens work and how Home Assistant interfaces with MQTT and there's a big, I'm going to say problem, but I can't understand how the graphics are generated and how they're placed on the screen. However, what this video is about is I've made a case for my bigger screen. So I'm going to talk about this case, and what I'm planning to do with it and how I made it. So obviously, I measured this screen and I started to model a case for it. Now there are cases online for the smaller screen, the 2.4 inch one. Uh, that is, I just said I've got the 3.5. Now the 3.5 has two advantages. One, you've got more real estate, the buttons will be bigger. And secondly, there's more memory in the screen itself. And I know that the HA switch plate is struggling with the uh, memory limit of these next gen displays. So what I did, I designed a model and I'll put it on the screen while we're talking and it was quite a big print. It was going to be several hours. So I thought, right, what I want to do is print just the face plate. So what I did was I, in my printing software I just printed out the faceplate to make sure that the faceplate would nicely clip inside which it did so that was my main concern and I wanted to print the case with the face down on the build plate to make sure it looked nice because I didn't want any uh, lines in the print and if i printed it up the other way it would be printing on an angle so that would make the, the lines even more visible because it would be going up at 45 degrees so that was my stipulation i sort of had an idea what i wanted with the case uh, for it to do i wanted it to sit, sit on the desk i wanted it to be pretty much 45 degrees but i did want the uh, bevels the thickness of the plate to be as thin as possible because if you make the bezel thinner where this software has three buttons along the edge it would possibly limit how you would be able to tap your finger on the button and I when I was modeling it this bezel was a three mil or two and a half mil at one stage and now it's about 1.6 mil and it's made a huge difference in first of all the way it looks and when you're tapping you tend not to tap the edge of the bezel you're just tapping the button so that was it 
So, um, other considerations of the box, I wanted some slots in the top. Although the HO switch plate purely only uses a D1 Mini, which I have a D1 Mini here, and the screen, and then once you've uploaded the firmware, everything's done updating over the air because this assembly would normally be inside of a switch plate hence the name in on in your wall so it's not accessible however i wanted to make a, a desktop version so i thought well i can see myself adding more sensors into this one of the sensors i thought about was a buzzer so i wanted my case at 45 degrees so i put some slots in the top um position so that when the screen goes in you don't really see the wires and that's why there's a big gap in the middle um there's a gap here for the sd card slot so you can if you if you need to update the um firmware on the screen you can either do it through the sd card or i believe with the hasp software you can update it over the air but i thought i'd put in the facility for uh, the sd card I, and then i wasn't sure how i was going to mount everything because when you buy these screens you get a little um, usb power adapter so my initial thought was i'm going to have this at the back because the screen needs about half an amp to drive it and it's too much just to power the uh, D1 Mini and then take the power off the screen from it I believe plus I'm thinking about my other sensors and they're going to need power so my idea was is hot glue and I wasn't sure about the positioning of this D1 Mini in the housing now I hear you ask how am I fitting this screen in the case now although this is a lovely print I did print the wrong version so I'm a bit gutted about that and um, the things that are missing are two holes so you can't see two holes in the back here which allow you to get a screwdriver in to put screws in to screw the panel in so the way this panel works is the wires the wires go in I'm just going to bend these down for now you push the screen in you push the screen in all the way up and then it it drops down so the screen is nicely seated in the bezel and there's plastic in here that that stops the screen um coming out um so my idea how to secure this version in is the hot glue inside because once the screen's in it's never going to come out and you can obviously get hot glue off when you need to i can't drill holes in this one because it's 3d printed without the corresponding holes ready to receive the screws in the body so if i was to drill them the screws would be just going into infill uh, which would be no good so i'm stuck with this version because i don't want to throw it away um, because it is a nice print so I'm going to hot glue mine in and see how it goes on. Um, oh, I'm sure the hot glue is going to be fine. Is the hot glue going to be strong enough that it, as you keep pressing the screen, it's only going to be, be finger pressure, would the screen ever drop out? But the production file that will be uploaded will have holes in the back. It will have the holes in the body so you can put screws in. Um, I would have to confirm what size screws you're going to need but they're going to be very short because the part it screws into is only four mil deep so it may mean having some very small fiber washers uh, in there 
to make sure the screw doesn't come out the face anyway so that's that then what i'm going to do um for the power supply again because i printed it wrong on this one i did have a a notch in the back here for a cable because my first idea was is to have the cable going straight into the box secure the, the cable somehow and then plug it in directly into the d1 mini then i thought about the power requirements of the screen power requirements perhaps extra leds a buzzer etc so my plan now is in the kit so you do get this usb power adapter so i'm going to hot glue the power adapter on the base and then i think possibly for this one hot glue the d1 mini on the base i'm uh, i'm debating whether to do that or to make a notch in the side so i can get a usb cable into the d1 mini uh to upload the firmware but my way of thinking is this is being designed just for the ha switch plate at the moment so once it's screwed together you can obviously unscrew it and get to it you can always take it apart if you had to flash the d1 mini by usb and not over the air so that's not too much of a problem so i'm going to fire up my hot glue gun and another as uh, well we're we're talking another little revamp i had to do is i did have the holes in uh these uh posts where the base goes in and i just had to use a countersink bit to put a slight chamfer on them because when the screw goes because this plate is the base is very thin and when the screws go in at the moment the i was worried about the chamfer of the screw trying to push its way through or onto the post so i just put a little chamfer and i'll update the cad model so you will get a slightly bigger hole than i first designed and a chamfer around the hole so let me get my glue gun fired up i run some hot glue around it and then i'll come back and um, hopefully it won't fall out so i think i have a pretty much standard hot glue gun it's got obviously quite a big nozzle so all i've done is i put a dab of hot glue on the base then press the adapter on it then run a small bead around and as for the screen itself i could only get up oh i'd imagine four fifths of the way up so i'm only up to there and i only got to the beginning of the sd card so the top is not really secure but obviously there's a lot of uh, hot glue going around the sides and there's a space here at the bottom to put some hot glue although the screen is sort of captured in the design of the 3d print um i thought i'd put a bit of hot glue there now the screws are quite small i put a uh, put a note what size they are on the screen they're three mil three mil by mil by 13. now you can't use anything longer than 13 mil because the screws will come through the post and anything longer will will hit the back of the screen so 13 mil is the longest um i think 30 mil is a is a, is a common size three mil is a common size you know it's not a micro screw so that should be fine so while the hot glue is drying, I will turn off and I'll see you back once it's dry. So the hot glue is still going off in in the box. I've just covered the back of the screen with a sheet of paper, um, just in case the D1 Mini should attack detach itself and fall on the screen. I pretty much put the D1 Mini central, but remember if you're doing it to hot glue it at an angle, 
can't quite see that but it's sloping up to make sure you can get a usb connector and what i actually did i had a usb connector in here while i was hot gluing it to make sure the standard ones i use will fit in there but say pretty much central of the uh rear plate so hopefully that will all seal up i'm just waiting for the hot glue really to go off i then just need to get some dupont cables from the power so i'm not sure whether this board's got two grounds but i'll probably make up a y connector so i have one cable here powering the uh d1 mini and then powering the screen as well but i uh, i have to think about that and come back to you let you know what i did so here we are it's all assembled four screws in the bottom now before you screw it up make sure the hole in the back is big enough to get the um usb connector in it's at a good angle so it's 45 degrees the screen is stuck in there well so you're not going to be tapping it that hard just got to find some anti-slip base now to put on the bottom maybe some little rubber stoppers out of ikea or something just to give it a bit of grip on the desk um let's get this beauty fired up and here we have the 3.5 inch ha switch plate mounted in a desk format now i've only got a few buttons working at the moment um because uh the program is designed as i explained for the 2.4 things are are working i can make it work but i can't get the graphics appearing so i've stopped my delving into the yaml and whatever else i have to look at to try and make the graphics appear until i get the smaller 2.4 inch and i can get that working and understand the graphics but it you know it does work um there's 11 pages or you can have 100 pages it doesn't really matter so um it's all fair once it's working with the graphics is very easy to program just search ha switch plate on the good old youtube and it will come up um it's going to obviously integrate into home assistant uh the reason i said i wanted a buzzer in the back is just that that it it then hopefully can give me notifications somehow by buzzing the buzzer uh, who knows it's it's limitless because i've got the space in the box rather with the ha switch plate project they're obviously limited in space into mounting it inside a wall of the american style switch plate so that's it there's probably going to be a part two once i have learned how to get the graphics working and that's what really makes it a very nice project having the graphics you can ch i can change colors on these buttons that's no problem I can make page 11 work, etc. And I'm sure I can have more pages and I'm not limited into the memory because the memory on this 3.5 inch screen is far bigger than the smaller 2.4 inch. So I'm sorry if I've waffled on a little bit, but this was just a, a build process. Uh, part two will be the more interesting one, getting it working and making it look pretty. Anyway, that's Andy now. Sign now. Have a good afternoon.